Well, welcome to our harvest service. Let's stand together. And I want to welcome actually tonight, today, our online service. People from all over the world joining us as we worship. Let's sing to God be the glory, all right? Oh, to God be the glory, great things He has done. So loved the world that He gave us His Son. Who yielded His life and atoned for sin. And opened the life gate that all may go in. Here we go. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord.
was told this song was sung every week in this church decades ago before almost all of us were here but they would sing like this there's a sweet sweet spirit in this place oh in this holy place oh and i that it's the spirit of the Lord, our precious Lord, our glorious King. There are sweet Thank you for your sweet Holy Spirit. I think about the decades ago when I sat in back at that first service and how you graced us uh, with the sweetness of your Holy Spirit in this place. And here we are decades later, Lord. Thank you for your presence. It's all your grace. Thank you for your comfort, your peace. We have so much to be thankful for. May we be just marked and known as a grateful people. And thank you for your grace, your blood shed for us today, salvation, and the gift of your precious Holy Spirit. And everyone said, amen. amen. You can be seated. And um, I was reading today where Paul was speaking of many hardships, and he said, those sorrowful, yet always rejoicing. And we are a people that some have carried sorrows into this place, but yet, we have joy, don't we? We have hope. We ever rejoice. And uh, may we make that, that choice today. Well, I think this is maybe the Christian Assembly Harvest Anthem. <laughs> For the first morning light, for the birds when they fly, for the clouds when they hang up so high in the sky, for your glory I see in a sweet baby smile. I give thanks for those times when I laugh with my family and friends, for the times when I cry. Just your spirit again For your love When the praises I send Yes I 
Hear the sound of the saints, shall we? I give thanks. Peace, your love brings hope. 
together and said out loud God's promises as a community. So I just thought we'd put up Psalm 136 and I would read the first half of the verse and you would say, His love endures forever. Sound good? Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, the God of gods. His love endures forever. 
Give thanks to the Lord of Lords again. His love endures forever. To him alone who does great wonders. His love endures forever. Who by his understanding made the heavens. His love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters. His love endures forever. Who made the great lights. His love endures forever. The sun to govern the day. The moon and stars to govern the night. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your love. Let's sing it conquers all. Oh, oh it conquers all. Sets me free. Breaks the power of the enemy. It is the power of my sin. your holy name, God. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your love. As we all know, Thanksgiving's coming up this week, and God's word is filled with the fact that God is good. Romans 12 tells us that we can come to know his good and perfect and pleasing will. Psalm 23 says that his goodness is going to follow us all the days of our life. We know that every good gift comes from him who is above. And so right now, just for a moment, we're just going to take a moment and you can just speak it out loud. What, what are you thankful for? What's good in your life? Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe, maybe it's just this moment. Maybe it's for music. What are you thankful for? Just, you can speak it quietly. You can speak it all at once at the same time. But God, I want to thank you. We want to thank you. So God, we thank you for your goodness, Lord. I thank you for my family. I thank you for this church, this congregation. I thank you for your word and your spirit. I thank you that your goodness and your mercy are going to follow us all the days of our life. I thank you that you're the good shepherd, God, that you come, that we might have life. We thank you for your goodness. God, I thank you that we're not on a football field like we were last year at this time. I thank you for that, God. I thank you of just the simple comforts of being indoors, having screens to give us the lyrics so we can really connect with you. And so now, Lord, we just pray for those on our right and our left. Maybe you came with them, you know them well, maybe you don't know them at all, but just pray a blessing over them now. God, I pray that you would help those on my right, those on my left to experience your goodness. Even in this time, even in this time, Lord, this week, as we move towards Thanksgiving Day, that you would just point out thing after thing after thing, that they could turn all of the blessings back to praise, back to thanksgiving. Lord, we ask, even in this time, would you meet with us? And as we've sung, would your sweet, sweet spirit be in this place? 
Revive us again, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be seated. This weekend, we're going to continue on in our series, God is Blank, where God is filling in the descriptors of who He is. And we're going to look at the fact that God is good. And sometimes we see that in small ways, and sometimes we see that in these really big, startling, even miraculous ways. <clears throat> this summer, while my family and I were on break, we received a phone call uh, about a dear friend of ours that we had been praying for a long time for a physical healing to occur. His name is Jimmy Chacon. Jimmy uh, had been in our house. He's friends with our kids. I, I remember Jimmy uh, teaching you how to pick a turkey and how messy it was, right? At one of our Thanksgivings in our home together. And you're going to hear Jimmy's story in a moment and really the miraculous thing that God did. But to help set that up, I need you to take a look at this side screen so that you can understand the context and watch this video. All right, vlog, right, we're on our way to go down camping. We're camping. hiking, we're hiking down to the beach. You see, that was my voice a week ago. For 17 years of my life, my voice has been almost gone. It sounded like that for 17 years. I've been to the doctor so many times, and every single time they say the exact same thing. They say, there's nothing wrong with your vocal cords. We don't know what's happened. Um, they told me at 15, if my voice did not change, it would stay like that forever. I was in a worship night during Commission the City Summer Camp, and I was literally just sitting there soaking in worship, and I got a word from the Lord that I might have gotten healed that night, but I've heard him say so clearly, Jimmy, don't speak for the rest of the sermon, which is really, really awkward, but I obeyed and I listened. And then the second worship set came on and I started singing and all of a sudden my voice completely changed and got completely healed. And I was in shock. I got up on stage and I shared. I said, guys, I think I got healed. And actually I went up on stage and I said, I don't know what happened. And the entire room erupted in joy because everyone knew what my voice sounded like. Everyone knew that that was a healing testimony. Everyone knew what it was. It was amazing. Come on up here, Jimmy. So Jimmy, thanks for making time to be here. Jimmy's part of our church and uh, his mom's part of our church and has been for a long time. And so Jimmy, we saw, and I've got to experience yeah. just the years of your voice, the the going to see specialists and all of it, yeah. uh, the years of waiting, but we saw you get the, the story of you being healed in worship. Yeah. Tell us just a little bit more about what was that experience like of, yeah. of being physically healed? <laughs> yeah, um, first of all, this is, I want to just take a moment and say this is crazy that I'm here. I'm sharing about my voice being healed because I've been going to this church pretty much my whole life. And if you would have told me that I'd be standing on stage sharing about my voice being healed, I don't know what I would have said. And I'm just so thankful for this church and the way they've poured into me, regardless of what my voice sounded like. So I just want to take this moment to recognize how crazy of a moment this was. Um, but yeah, so like Tom said, for 17 years, my voice was like the beginning of that video. And my mom can tell you, she's taken me to the doctor so many times. And every time it was always a disappointing, there's nothing we can do. We have no idea what's wrong. If it doesn't get better, there's not not really much hope. That was my story for 17 years. So I went to this summer camp um, in Hawaii, not even like more than six months ago. Like this was so recent. Um, so I went there this summer, not expecting to get healed, not expecting anything to happen. I've been praying for years, but honestly, I kind of got to the point where I was like, the Lord will do it when he does it. So I get there and it's just during worship. I'm sitting there, like I said in the video and the Lord told me I was getting healed. I didn't speak for the rest of the night and the rest is history. And now I'm standing here sharing about my healing. <laughs> This healing feels uh, personal and close to me. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy, when we got the phone call and I heard your voice, I'm like, that's not Jimmy. Like, yeah. well, whose voice is coming through the yeah. phone? Um, my whole family was just yeah. in tears. We love you so much. Jimmy, though, you know, as we've talked and we've had a long friendship, um, one of the things that you've said to me is we've talked about the physical, meal, uh, the physical mm -hmm. healing and the miracle of that. But I want you to talk, what you've shared with me, I want you to share with yeah. everyone, that, that thing that you've talked about of the greater yeah. miracle that yeah. God has done in your life, yeah. even beyond the physical healing, which is obviously amazing. Yeah. So what do you mean when you talk about the greater miracle yeah. that God has done in your life? 
Yeah, I mean, just for context, I mean, imagine having that voice as a 10-year-old, 11-year-old, 13-year-old, going to high school where everyone talks about you behind your back, where everyone says things like, it caused me to have so much insecurity, where to the point where I, like, I wouldn't talk to people. I'd whisper. Some of the leaders at 678 can tell you when they met me in sixth grade, I whispered my name because I was so afraid of what people thought of me. And healing is amazing, but Every time I saw a miracle, I saw lots of miracles during that camp. Every time I saw a miracle, my first thought, this is amazing, but my greater miracle is my friendship with Jesus that developed because of my voice. For years, I, I didn't have the approval of people. I didn't have the approval of friends. And so I read my Bible, and I read things like Jesus wanting me so much that he bled and died on a cross. I read things like Jesus was my friend, and I started getting approval from God and not man. And the approval of man slowly and surely just diminished. And I realized I don't want and I do not need anything else but this friendship with Jesus. So, man, yeah. Yeah, so healing and miracles are amazing. I've experienced it. My voice right now is living proof that God does miracles, but I would have it no other way. No other way for 17 years of not having this voice if it meant I didn't have friendship with Jesus. That is my true treasure. And I'm standing here today telling you that is really my true treasure. And if there's anything I want people to get from my story, from my testimony, is those things that the enemy tries to tell you you're not worth it. Those things the enemy is trying to tell you God doesn't love you. What if it's actually God wanting to bring you closer to him? I felt the Lord say, Jimmy, those 17 years, the reason you had that voice and it wasn't an instant healing was because I desired relationship and friendship with you in a deeper, intimate way. And I'm so, so thankful, so thankful that the Lord waited. I'm so thankful because mm. it caused me to rely on him. Mm. It caused me to trust him. Mm. And it caused me to be friends with God, the greatest miracle I'll ever experience mm. in my life. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Jimmy, I don't know if you remember this, but one time our families were on vacation up at Big Bear. Yeah. We were walking on the you know, walkway there. You were telling me about a sense of call to mission, yeah. and we talked about your voice. And yeah. you were like, how can I be called to, mm. to declare the wonders of yeah. God with this voice? Yeah. And we prayed as we walked, and, yeah. and we talked about that and said, we're going to have yeah. to trust this to God. Yeah. You know, one of the things, yeah. so just imagine, Jimmy's a student at um, Crescenta Valley High School at, in CV. Just imagine all the students who've known his voice all these years. And then he yeah. comes back this summer, and his voice is yeah. different. Imagine what that does to a high school. Yeah. I can tell you what it does. I've already heard the ripple effects. Jimmy's already gotten to stand in the gym and share his testimony to all the students who gather. It's amazing to hear. Crazy. So what we're going to do right now is just pray. So Lord, right now we want to pray. I want to pray for Jimmy first. And as a congregation, we just want to say thank you for this man. Thank you for his friendship with you. Thank you for the healing work that you've done. Thank you for the greater miracle of friendship with God. And Lord, now I pray for each one who is here that maybe has some type of physical ailment. I ask that you would bring healing in Jesus' name to them. Lord, I pray for those who maybe it's not a a physical healing, maybe it's an emotional one. I ask God, would you bring emotional healing in Jesus' name? You are a good, good Father. Would you bring relational healing? Would you bring mental healing? Spiritual healing? Reconcile us to you. Do the greater miracle in each one of us that we might speak and use our voice to speak about the greater miracle that's available to everyone, friendship with God. Would you do that, we ask? And Lord, I pray that there would be a spirit of joy even as we continue in our service to just stand in awe, to not even try to explain a miracle, but just stand in awe of it and say, God, we thank you. So Lord, I thank you for healing my dear, dear friend, Jimmy Chacon. And may you use his voice for whatever purposes in your glory throughout his whole life, we ask in Jesus' name. And may you use our voice 
and our story and a greater miracle of friendship with God throughout our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Gang, you can stand up. Say hi to those around you. Greet one another and welcome those around you. Well, welcome everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. My name is Jill and it is great to be with you guys. Um, I want to add a special welcome to anyone who's visiting or anyone who's new, maybe a friend or a family member invited you, but we're so glad that you are with us. There is a connection card in your seat back. You can fill that out to let us know that you're new and then one of our pastors would love to follow up with you. You can drop your connection card in the offering bags when they come around in just a moment. We also have a new people's table out in the lobby, so we invite you to stop by there after service. Well, you guys, we also want to extend a very special welcome to all of our online guests who are joining us for our weekend services. And so we are recording segments of our Saturday service for our online services, and the online service will be posted on Sunday morning. So what we want to do right now is have an opportunity for you all to say hello to all of our online guests. So what you can do right now, I'm going to invite you, turn that way. You don't have to stand up. Just turn that way. Look towards that screen up there or the camera and just wave and say hi to everyone who's joining us online. So again, if you're with us online, we are so glad that you're joining us. Well, you guys, we are so exciting, excited for our upcoming Christmas services and Christmas Eve services as we get to celebrate together the birth of our Savior. And so we're going to have special music, messages about a thrill of hope. We're also going to have a really fun and special Kids Church Light Up program for kids ages birth through fifth grade. Uh, you should have received on your seats an invitation, a green or red invitation. And so we want to encourage you guys to invite your friends, family, coworkers workers, neighbors, everyone you know to join us for our Christmas and our Christmas Eve services and to hear the good news of Jesus. Our Christmas services will be on December 18th and 19th at our regular weekend service times. And then our Christmas Eve services will be on December 23rd and 24th. So that's a Thursday and a Friday. In your bulletin, you should have received one of these RSVP cards. Um, this is an RSVP card which will help us on the planning side of things to make sure that we have enough seats for everyone who's coming for all your guests and family and kids and that we can make these services the best experience possible. So we want to invite you guys right now to take this RSVP card out of your bulletin. You can wave it at me if you would like, but take this out, grab a pen, and we want to ask that you would take a moment to fill this card out. This is also different than the planning cards we asked you to fill out several weeks back. This is an RSVP card. It's not a ticket, but please take a moment to fill this out and let us know how many people will be joining you, kids, adult, guests, um, and which service time you plan to attend. So I'm going to give us about 30 seconds right now to fill out these cards. There's also a spot on these cards where you can let us know if you want to volunteer with our kids church or welcome teams. So take a few moments to fill that out and then you can drop that in the offering bags when they come around in a moment. Thank you, Tommy and the team, for the background music. <laughs> you guys, so thank you again so much for filling out those RSVP cards and just helping us on the planning side of things for our Christmas services. So again, you can drop those in the offering bags when they come around in just a moment. Well, now we have an opportunity to continue to express our gratitude and our thanksgiving back to God through the giving of our tithes and offering and finances. So uh, we will be passing the offering bags in just a moment. You can also give online through our Christian Assembly LA app or on our website. We want to say thank you so, so much for your ongoing giving and generosity. And if you're new or visiting, please feel no obligation to give. Would you join me as we pray together? 
God, thank you so much for who you are and thank you for all that you have done for us. God, thank you for that amazing, miraculous healing story that Jimmy shared with us and all you've done in his life. God, thank you for all you've done in all of our lives. Thank you, God, for what you've done through the life and death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And God, I just pray that in this season, every day, but especially in this Thanksgiving week, that you would make us people of gratitude and people of thanksgiving, Lord, that we would give all of our thanks and gratitude to you, Lord. We love you. We pray all this in your great name, Jesus. Amen. Who is the God who said to the darkness, let there be light in who is the God who made the heaven, the sun and moon, the stars and sky? children come to me. He healed the sick and walked on water. He conquered death to set us free. students are going to read to us the names of God, reminding us of the attributes of God. All right, go ahead. He's the Holy One, the I Am, the beginning and the end, the infinite, all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present, invisible, miracle-working God. He's the creator of the world, the righteous judge, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. So who is this God? For this God is our God, forever and ever. He will be our guide, even to the end. He's the Lamb of God, the bread of life, the firm foundation, the bright and morning star. His name is Emmanuel, Redeemer, Wonderful Counselor, the Everlasting Father, the Ancient of Days. He's the Rewarder, the Healer, the Prince of Peace, the Hope of Glory. He is our soon and coming King. Let's sing it together. Oh, this God, He is our God forevermore and evermore. He'll be our God in life from now until the end of time. This God, He is our God forevermore and evermore. He'll be our God in life from now until the end of time. Yeah. 
thank them and the team one more time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That was amazing. Thank you for the work that you put into that. That was amazing. Well, I want to welcome, if you're a visitor or guest, my name is Tom, and of course to my CA family, great to be with you. I also want to welcome the online portion of our congregation to my CA family who's online. Great to be with you as well as any visitors or guests. Awesome to have you with us as well on this weekend. Well, I want to say to everybody, happy Thanksgiving, right? One of the constant sources of Thanksgiving in my life is all of you and how I see God at work in each one of you. It's amazing to see how God is at work. Well, let me ask you, can you recall the very first prayer maybe that you ever learned as a child? Maybe, maybe you learned it as an adult. Was it for you like it was for me, the prayer that is prayed by children around the dinner table even today? Here it is. This is the one that my dad taught me. God is great. God is good. And we thank him for our food, right? Some of you have heard that prayer before. You've said that prayer. There's a lot of wisdom in these words. So this Thanksgiving celebration weekend, we continue our God is blank series with this. God is good. And we're going to consider that. But before we do, let's pray. God, we thank you that you are good. That you reveal yourself to be good that you overcome our fears and suspicions that you're not good, that your goodness and mercy won't follow us all the days of our life. You're so persistent in your goodness, you overcome our fears. You overcome our worries. So God, as we come now to your word, would you speak to us? God, I ask that the meditation of my heart, the words of my mouth would be pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. I ask that you would anoint them to awaken souls, maybe for the first time, maybe to be revived and recommitted after a long and weary season. God, I ask that you would do this for those present in this place as well as those present online. In Jesus' name, amen. On your way in, hopefully you got a bulletin. If you're online, you can catch it on the website as well. You'll see the scriptures that are there that we're going to be digging into throughout our time together this weekend. Well, that old prayer that I learned as a child said that God is great and God is good. And both of those statements are true. God is great in a way that cannot be said of any other person or any other thing. God alone in his greatness is the all-sufficient one. Everything else that we ever touch, everything else that we ever interact with or discover is what would be called a contingent thing. It has a, has a need. It requires something to cause it to come into being or to continue it into an existence or to comfort it. But God is not like any other. God has no needs outside of himself at all. Thankfully, though, God is not only great, but he is also good. You see, the the true glory of God's immense greatness is rooted in His incomparable goodness. Because if God is not good, then we dare would not say that God is great. In Mark 10, verse 17 and on, we read this. As Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem, a man came running up to him and knelt down and asked, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus asked and responded, Why do you call me good? Only God is truly good. Now in saying this, you need to understand that Jesus was not saying that Jesus wasn't good. Oh, he is, and he was, and we'll return to that a bit later. No, the reason that Jesus answered this way is because he knew how much the concept of we fallen humans need the concept of goodness to be stretched, to even understand the word. 
We throw that word good around a lot, barely even grasping its meaning and how we've degraded it. Some department store Santa asks little Susie, were you good this year? And Susie responds, oh yes, Santa, I only kicked my brother a few times last week. Or Ricardo comes back from being out with his buddies and his wife or his girlfriend asks, were you good? Oh, I was, I was just out with the guys having a few beers, but he kindly leaves out the fact that their married friend, Dave, asked for the waitress's phone number and Ricardo himself couldn't help but comment on the other woman's looks himself. But he says to his wife sweetly, don't worry, honey, I was good. Or the head of a sales team skirts a scolding for failing to close a key de- deal by playing to the boss's vanity. Oh, I-, I know that if they had had the chance to meet you, Steve, they would have bitten on the deal and the sale for good. And on the way out of the meeting, a coworker leans over and whispers slyly, Oh, you're good. Do you get the picture? The concept of goodness for us is sort of a, a squishy thing. We think, well, I'm good because I could have been worse. I'm good because I know someone else who is worse. I'm good because I can get other people to think or feel about me that I'm good. But none of that is actually the same as actually being good, is it? Even when selfishness or pride isn't the driving motivation, we often settle for a limited definition of good simply because we lack the experience with something that is more good still. For example, many people thought that Magic Johnson was the definition of a really good basketball player until Michael Jordan came along. Or Dallas Cowboy fans think that their team has a good record in the Super Bowls until they compare it to the Pittsburgh Steelers' better record in the Super Bowls. People think that the first iPhone is good until the next iPhone comes out and is an even better one that is produced. Again and again, the Bible declares that God is good. Not a squishy good, not a malleable good, not a relative good. An eternal, objective, perfect, all-consuming, ever-pursuing, all the days of our life, good. Psalm 100 verse 5 says, For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever, and His faithfulness continues to each generation. Psalm 34 8 says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in Him. Why? Because they can count, you can count on His goodness. You know, the message of Scripture is that God alone is good in the absolute sense. In fact, the English word good actually comes from the word God. In its original definition, goodness meant godliness. If you want to teach your kids to be good, or if you want to strive after goodness yourself, then you must keep in view this eternal attribute of God. And to the degree that we see any deterioration of goodness in our time, it is because we have turned away our gaze from God and we have forgotten what objective, eternal, perfected goodness is and we settle for squishy, malleable, relative, ever-decreasing in quality goodness. But the truth is, That any truly good thing that comes to us comes from God who is good. Psalm 16.2 says it this way. I say to the Lord, 
You are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. One of my favorite stories of someone coming to Christ in this church happened years ago. The guy's name is Jay. He might even be here. And in my conversation with him, what he said is things were going so well in my life and I felt so thankful and I just didn't know who to thank. And that began his investigation of the goodness of God. A.W. Tozer once said it this way, The goodness of God is that which disposes him to be kind, cordial, benevolent, and full of goodwill towards people. He is tender-hearted and of quick sympathy. His unfailing attitude towards all moral beings is open and frank and friendly. By his nature, he is inclined to bestow blessing on his people. And those are hopeful words for certain. But let me ask you, if you were going to try to convince your neighbor, maybe a family member, who's not so convinced about the goodness of God, what actual evidence would you point to in order to demonstrate that God is so unusually good? Let me tell you what I see. Before I went to bed last night, I looked up at a clear sky, a dark sky, and I could see some stars twinkling above me. And as beautiful as that view was, I've got just enough education to know that what I was looking at out into the vast expanse of the universe should in no reasonable way make life possible for me. Scientists tell me that the overwhelming pervasive character of about 99.9 .9 and a whole lot of other nines percent of space that they see can be summed up in these four words, darkness, lifelessness, emptiness, and unthinkable cold. You know, people, we will sometimes point to all the suffering and struggle that happens on this earth as evidence that God is not good. Because we've forgotten our role in the fall when we introduced sin into creation. Now, I'm not taking anybody's pain or losses lightly. My own life, my own family, we've had some of our own pains and losses too. But here's how I look at it. I would take five minutes of the light and life and learning and laughter and love that God makes possible on this unique planet over five million years of darkness and lifelessness and emptiness and of the unthinkable cold out there. You know, we people, we have a, a stunning way of focusing on the forbidden fruit and the snakes in the grass when we are surrounded by an absolutely staggering amount of abundance of blessing and goodness. And if you read Genesis, apparently that's been a problem for we humans from the very beginning. I got up this morning and gravity worked again for me. From the look of all the people that I passed on my way here, and those that I can see even in this moment, the complex miracle of life is still operating quite well. The sun was still at just the right distance today to keep me from freezing or from frying today. Throughout this morning, I've been able to experience all sorts of what theologians will refer to as common graces. These are the simple gifts that come to us from God simply because we are human beings. This morning, one of the common graces I experienced was dark coffee, and it was amazing. <laughs> I experienced the smell of grass. I could hear music. I could see beauty. I could see the mountains. I could remember that we live in one of the unique places on planet Earth where you can go surfing in the morning and snowboarding in the evening. 
I could feel the touch of warm hands. I could relate to people who could relate to me. I could experience and sense and see God's goodness coming through them. And just think about what opportunities to love and laugh and learn, to share with those who have less of these gifts await us this week. You know, the Bible says in Genesis, after creating life on this planet, in Genesis 1.31, it says, God saw all that he made, and it was very good. And I'm inclined to agree with him. I'm moved by the goodness of God in creation. I'm moved by the goodness of God in, in these common graces. But I'm also moved by the goodness of God shown to me through the stories of the Old Testament. The psalmist says in 145 verse 9, The Lord is good to all, and His tender mercies are over all of His works. I see His goodness in His mercy in the way that He treated Adam and Eve. Here are two people that had broken His trust and wounded His heart deeply and introduce sin into his only good creation at that point in time, bringing about the fall of creation. And yet the Bible says that rather than abandoning them or killing them, God clothed them in animal skins and watched over them. The goodness of God is is evident in his calling of Abraham in the birth of the nation of Israel. The goodness of God is present in His careful preservation of the Hebrew people through famine and pestilence and war. It's there in delivering them from slavery in Egypt and giving them a magnificent law that would become the framework of laws and moral codes of countless other nations to come, including even our very own. His goodness is present in leading them through the wilderness, guiding them to the promised land, raising up judges and priests and kings to lead His people. His goodness is all through the voice of the prophets, warning Israel of the spiritual dangers and calling them to be people of justice and compassion for the widow and the orphan, the poor and the stranger. And even through the exiles that his people endured as a price of their waywardness, God in his goodness never gave up on them. With his patient kindness, he kept calling them home. Who is good like God? If I never had the evidence of creation, if I never had the experience of common graces, If I never knew the story of Israel to instruct me, the person and work of Jesus would be more than enough to convince me of the goodness of the character of God. Author Philip Yancey once wrote and said this, quote, I must admit that Jesus has revised in the flesh many of my harsh and unpalatable notions about God. Why am I a Christian, he writes. Sometimes I ask myself. And to be perfectly honest, the reason's reduced to two. The first is the lack of other good alternatives. <laughs> and the second is one word, Jesus. Brilliant, untamed, tender, creative, slippery, irreducible, paradoxically humble Jesus stands up to scrutiny. He is who I want my God to be. Could God really be like Jesus? Like when we see Jesus embracing the lepers and the outcasts, when he's dining with the outcasts, stooping to wash the stinking feet of the people who are about to betray or abandon him, what is that telling us about God? I mean, if I were Jesus, I would have dismissed Judas before I did the foot washing But Jesus didn't. 
when Jesus tells us about a shepherd who goes out into the night to find one last lamb, or he tells us the story of the heartbroken father who never stops yearning for the return of his wayward child. What is he trying to get across to us? When Jesus is surrounded by a clamoring crowd and not only notices but actually stops to give his full attention to little people that others would ignore and despise. When he declares his utmost compassion for the hungry, the cold, the sick, the thirsty, what message is there for us? Above all of this, when Jesus voluntarily allows his body to be beaten and flayed and ravaged for the sake of the people who will turn their backs on him, when he sees Mary and John and he's on the cross and they try to comfort him, but he turns back to comfort them instead, when he promises paradise to a dying thief on the cross who is desperately hoping against hope for last minute grace, when with his final aching breaths, Jesus prays forgiveness for the very people who put him on the cross. Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. What is that telling us about the goodness of God. You know the answer, don't you? There are only really two reasons why someone's so all sufficient in himself that needs nothing from anyone else or anything else would desire to say and do the things, the very things that Jesus did. Either he is altogether crazy and a madman, or he is very. Very, very good. Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Only God alone is good. Subtext, are you now understanding that I'm God? Is that why you come to me for eternal life? Is that why you come calling me good? He is very very, very good. And since he is that good, what do you need to ask him for his good help right now in your life? Since he is that good, if you could for a moment be captured by his goodness, how can you feel his word, his life, his spirit drawing you to be more good like him. What fear are you facing do you need to choose to remove because you know that he is the good shepherd who will walk with you, that his goodness is going to follow you all the days of your life? What thanksgiving do you need to bring to him for all that he's done and all that he is? Or what's stopping you maybe for the first time, maybe again, to say, since you're that good, I want to give my life to you. I want my life to reflect your goodness. Let's pray. God, I thank you that you are good. Thank you for the goodness of creation. Thank you for the goodness of common graces. Thank you for the goodness shown throughout the Old Testament. And thank you for your goodness shown in your Son, Jesus Christ. Whether you're online or whether you're present physically right now with us, let me just ask you as we pray, is there anything you need to ask our good God for help with right now? Ask Him. He is a good, good father. Don't let your fears and suspicions hold you back from coming to him. Is there anywhere that you need his good strength to be more like him? Ask him right now. Is there any fear you need help removing as you consider how good God is? Ask him to remove that fear. 
Or maybe just for you, you simply need to say, thank you for your goodness. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, whether you're online or in person, I want to give you that opportunity now. If you are in person, whether you think you're going to make this decision or not, I want you to go ahead and grab this little response card. It's in the seat back in front of you. Online, you'll be able to email us and let us know the decision that you want to make. I want you to put this in your hand. Sometimes we need a physical thing to help focus our mind and spirit that we don't miss a moment. You were created by an absolutely perfect, good God. And when he created you in Genesis, when he looked at you, he called creation good, but when he looked at you, he called you very good. And yet the enemy came sowing suspicion and fear and doubt. And we, with our ways... Focus more on the forbidden fruit or the snakes in the grass than the staggering abundance of his blessing and goodness. We wondered if maybe he wasn't so good, and so we turned away. And that's the story of Genesis, but the reality is, as Scripture says, it's all of our stories that is just written over again in our own lives in a million different ways. And yet in his goodness, God has not given up on you. He's not given up on me. His Son, Jesus Christ, has come to remove the fear and the suspicions of what God is like so that in Jesus you can see with greater high definition the resolution of God's absolute goodness, not the squishy, degradated form of goodness we all often refer to. God's will and plan for your life is good. He has good plans for you. He's created you with good intentions. For you to live out those good plans and good intentions, at some point you have to come to faith in Him, to trust in His goodness. And when you look at the cross and you see that Jesus died on the cross so that you and I can be forgiven of our sins, when you see that He didn't just say to the people there, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do, but that prayer applies to a guy like me, a person like you. Maybe you need to make the decision to say, okay, I see your goodness. And the cross didn't finish the goodness because three days later he got up from the grave that we might live a new life. As he said, I go to prepare a place for you. And I'm not going to leave you as orphans because I'm going to give you my good Holy Spirit that's going to comfort you and lead you into all truth and guide you. God is good. God's Word says that faith is born from hearing of God's Word. As you've heard God's good Word now, may you respond. So Lord, we pray, each one of us now, online, in person, help us know how you want us to respond. If maybe for the very first time you're just saying yes to Jesus, you can just say, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sin because of your goodness and give me right fellowship with you, restored to right relationship with you, that Jesus, as you prayed, that the Father and I and you would be one, that you would fill me with your spirit and word. And if you're praying that prayer for the very first time, I want to welcome you into the family of God. I want you to take that response card and fill it out. And when you exit, you'll drop it in the bucket. Or if you're online, you'll email in. And we're just going to simply follow up. But others of us, maybe you've wandered. Maybe you've drifted. And you hear the goodness of God. You sense the goodness of God. You sense the Holy Spirit calling you back to Him. Maybe for you, it's like, okay, it's been a long, hard season. And I've drifted and I've wandered. But I'm coming back and I'm trusting in the goodness of God. You need to say that to God. And then you need to mark that card. Why? So that we can just follow up with you. 
Maybe others of you, you've experienced the goodness of God, but you've never been baptized. I want to encourage you in your next step of discipleship to say, I want to be baptized so that we can help you in that next step, that you would live out your first next step in following Jesus. And lastly, you'll see there on the card, some of you, it's like, I want to investigate faith. We want to help you do that because God is so good. He wants to help you overcome your fear, your worry, your doubt. So God, now I ask, by your spirit, would you call us to respond in the way that you see fit? Let us not miss this moment. Don't take it for granted. Today, if you hear his voice, respond is what God's word says. God, I thank you for your goodness. May we live in your goodness all the days of our life. If you filled out that card when you exit after our final song of worship, you can drop it in the buckets and we will follow up with you. Tommy, will you lead us? Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Let's stand and sing it. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Oh, oh, oh. your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. All my life, and all my life, you have been paid. All my life, you have. Dismissed. We'll have prayer teams. What a blessing to be with you today. Amen.